SSI probably started mostly because of my son. Uh, I wanted to find a, a viable way to train him without having to spend $30,000 of investment money. And so I started training my son on a simulator. So simulation was something that uh, was, it was a viable option because the technology had really actually caught up a lot with, with the reality of what it takes to, to be fast on a race car. Well, I've been with my dad's training program for about eight years now. So I was there before the company was even around, which was about five years ago. So uh, it helped me with a lot of things, um, like with the basics and advanced techniques, driving and your mentality and uh, way of life. It helped uh, guide me to push myself and push my limits on what I need to do to uh, to get better. I mean, SSI, it, it, we, we design programs specific to everyone's goals. And I think that's, that's sort of the defining difference. When you go to another racing school, they, they basically say, this is, the, this is the program, you follow it, and goodbye. And so what, what we really try our best to do is, is to get to know our customer base. What are their goals? Do they want to race autocross? Do they want to race formula cars? Do they want to race go-karts? Or do they just want to take their car out on a track day? They want to learn how to shift. They want to learn how to trail break. They want to learn how to overtake. And from there, we design a program based on their specific goals. So I think that that's kind of our, our ability to, to be a little bit more adaptable you know, another thing that I think is really special and exciting about what we do is our simulator is mobile. It can be brought to events. We bring it to go-kart tracks. We bring it to big tracks, Sonoma Raceway, Laguna Seca, to conduct a lot of driver development at the actual racetrack. A lot of people are busy. A lot of people at work. They go to school. It, it really doesn't matter. It can be brought to your house. And so we have the flexibility to be able to bring the racing experience to you. I think SSI Racing School really stands out. and It's truly a hidden gem in the motorsport world because if you want to get started in racing and go on testing with go-karting or race cars, it's thousands upon thousands of dollars. Well, I mean, it, motorsports in general is expensive. You know, there's, there's just no way around that. And what I recognize is that, that there's, there's a, a giant hole in the market of, of young people or older people that just stay away from the sport because they're put off by the cost of actually learning these skills. So what, what I think was so powerful about simulation is we can chop that operating cost to teach these skills. By fraction. I think it provides a lot of good insights on, on certain tracks. Just for example, if you want to learn Laguna Seca or, or Barcelona um, before, before a real-life event, you have that advantage to get hop on the simulator and memorize the corners and figure out your rhythm. And it also offers really good uh, technique that you can practice over and over and over again. Simulation training is, is not everything. We, we readily recognize that. There needs to be an, a viable outdoor platform that we can apply all of these theories to, which is why we thought it was very important to start developing partnerships. And so we found a local indoor, outdoor, gas-powered go-kart facility that wanted to partner with us. So now we can set up our simulator at their facility, work on technique, and then go apply it on their racetrack with our helmet communication device. And so from up here, I have a nice vantage point. I can get a bird's eye view of some of the technical corners on the racetrack. We have a helmet communication device that we utilize as well, uh, where I can talk to the driver and give them uh, a little bit more tips, a little bit more advice on how to execute properly. The, the benefit of utilizing the helmet communication device is if you're doing a lot of laps and you're making 
some mistakes here and there. Uh, you've got to wait until you finish your race, come back up, we debrief, and you know a lot of time has elapsed and you tend to forget where you made the mistake, what was going on during that mistake. We can take care of that in real time. Uh, I can tell we can talk about it almost instantaneously when it's happening and make adjustments so that the following lap we can address those issues a lot quicker, becomes more productive, and we shorten the cycle of, of learning, essentially. So the, the, tr the racetrack that we work with at Le Mans Karting here is a combination indoor-outdoor uh, racetrack, which is pretty unique for the California area. And one of the main reasons that we chose it is because it gives a lot of variety of types of corners. It has fast sweeping corners, it has slow technical corners, it has switchbacks. It has a lot of the technical corners that really can make the difference between going quick and making mistakes and how to address it and how to uh, utilize the proper techniques. So this is the indoor section that we're working with here. A lot of the technical corners are inside. And then the outdoor section actually has a lot of the fast sweeping corners, some technical corners as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll sort of separate the training session here as well as outdoor. I'll move, I'll move the equipment outside and we'll have a separate session where we deal with the outdoor uh, portion of the racetrack. Like I said, we, we take care of most of the theoretical aspect of things on the actual simulator and then here's where we execute and do the more practical application uh, of the things that we train for. Yeah, and you can use our simulator to learn manual shifting without screwing up someone else's clutch. Like for me, for example, when I was 12 years old, I learned how to drive stick on the simulator, and then by the time I got in the car, I already knew how to do it. A variety of cars and all across the spectrum, and tracks all over the world, it's uh, limitless. Well, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we provide as much as possible an accurate representation of what it would be like in the real world. For instance, we designed a projection screen versus a three screen, which is what you see traditionally with a lot of simulation systems that has the bezel that distorts the video. And if you're taller or shorter, you have to keep repositioning. When you have a projection screen, you don't have that distortion. So you get a full immersion system, whether you're six foot eight or four foot two. In addition to that, you know, we, we spend a lot of time understanding what is necessary for a person to go fast. And it's all muscle memory. So we paid very specific focus on making sure that we have pedals that accurately represent what your muscles are going to be doing when you brake, when you throttle, when you clutch, as well as the steering wheel to make sure we had accurate feedback. And those are the things that we found have worked very well because when people get in our simulator and they train for specific tasks and then they go in the real world whether it's formula four or a miata they come back and say yes the simulation program that we went through worked <laughs>